Given the numerous barriers to physical activity after a spinal cord injury, we know that 50% of people with a spinal cord injury do not participate in any leisure time physical activity whatsoever. By leisure time physical activity, I mean sports, exercise, physical activities you do in your free time. And of those who are physically active, we know that only a small minority are sufficiently active on a regular basis to derive fitness benefits. Now that 50% inactivity statistic is alarming, especially when you consider that people with SCI are incredi incredibly susceptible to inactivity-related diseases, such as cardiovascular disease, diabetes, obesity, and we also know that in many cases, inactivity can lead to further loss of function and independence above and beyond what's caused by the spinal cord injury itself. So it, it's very clear that physical activity participation is absolutely vital to the health and well-being of people with spinal cord injury. And yet, historically, information and services promoting physical activity have been two of the services most desired but least available within the spinal cord injury community. So in 2007, as the result of a grant from the Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council of Canada, SCI Action Canada was established. So SCI Action Canada is a partnership between community-based organizations and university-based researchers who are focused on advancing physical activity participation and knowledge among Canadians living with a spinal cord injury. Our community partners are organizations that provide services to people with spinal cord injury, such as CPA Ontario and Thompson Rogers. Organizations that promote sport and physical activity to people with disabilities, such as the Canadian Paralympic Committee and the Canadian Wheelchair Sports Association. And organizations that have a vested interest in health and physical activity in the general population, including the provincial government and participation. Our research partners come from nine different institutions, and there are 14 researchers in total. And we are united in this common mission of developing and mobilizing evidence-informed strategies that inform, teach, and enable people living with a spinal cord injury to initiate and maintain an active lifestyle. And what I really want to impress upon you is that even though this term evidence-informed or evidence-based is something I'm going to be using throughout this presentation, SCI Action Canada is about far more than just generating research. We are heavily invested in knowledge translation. And if you're unfamiliar with that term, I really like how our partners at uh, the Ontario Neurotrauma Foundation define knowledge mobilization or knowledge translation, which is getting the right information to the right people at the right time. So when we came together with this, uh, this idea of advancing physical activity participation, we knew that we had a tremendous barrier in front of us. And that barrier was the lack of evidence-based guidelines indicating how much activity adults with spinal cord injury need to do for good health or well-being. Now, I work in physical activity promotion, and I can tell you it is virtually impossible to get people more physically active unless you can tell them exactly how much activity they need to do, how often, and for how long. So recognizing that was a barrier, early on in our initiative, we set to work to develop the first evidence-based physical activity guidelines for adults with spinal cord injury. And I'm always really proud when I go out and talk about the guidelines because the spinal cord injury community is actually the first community with a disability to have its own evidence-based physical activity guidelines. The SCI community got them first. Now these guidelines are designed for people with chronic spinal cord injury, with paraplegia or tetraplegia, and the guidelines state that to derive significant fitness benefits, people with spin spinal cord injury are required to engage in two bouts of aerobic activity twice per week, or sorry, two bouts for at least 20 minutes, and also two bouts of strength training per week, consisting of three sets of eight to 10 repetitions of each exercise. Now, I want to emphasize that these are guidelines to increase physical fitness, particularly aerobic endurance and muscular strength. 
I often get asked about what are the guidelines to decrease the risk for, for chronic disease. And unfortunately, the research evidence in the spinal cord injury literature isn't sufficient yet to generate guidelines in terms of how much activity is needed to reduce disease. But we did have sufficient evidence to generate guidelines for these two key fitness benefits. And certainly, knowing how much activity is needed to increase aerobic endurance and muscular strength is very important because these two fitness components are vital for so many aspects of, of daily living, for wheeling, performing transfers, uh, self-care activities, uh, household chores. At any rate, many different ways that those two bouts could be achieved each week. Um, for example, arm cranking, uh, participation in sports, water exercises, functional electrical stimulation. Um, arm leg cycling. Likewise with strength training, we uh, variety of different ways that those two bouts of strength training can be achieved as well. Uh, extra strength training with arm pulleys, therabands, weights. We know that sports that uh, require wheeling or throwing or swinging a tennis racket can also increase muscular strength. Wanted to reinforce the, the evidence base underlying the guidelines. So how are the guidelines developed? We scoured essentially every piece of literature that had been published looking at the effects of exercise training on fitness among people with spinal cord injury. There are almost uh, 100 studies that have been published. We synthesized this literature and then it was submitted to a consensus panel uh, consisting of researchers, clinicians, and also consumers. The panel went through the evidence and generated the physical activity guidelines as they uh, were presented today. So we have our guidelines, a, a huge barrier uh, overcome, but uh, certainly having physical activity guidelines, that's only the tip of the iceberg. We all know that physical activity is good for us. We all have a, a decent sense, I think, of how much we should be doing, but of course, the vast majority of the general population, let alone the spinal cord population, are physically inactive. So SA Action Canada, in addition to generating the guidelines, we've also been very busy in developing resources, tools, services that can be used to help facilitate people in achieving those physical activity guidelines. So what I want to do now is to present to you the vast range of services, tools, programs, and so on that are available. So for the healthcare professionals in the audience, I want to make you aware of these things so that you can, you can show them to your clients, to your patients. For the consumers in the audience, I, I really want you to, to be aware of what's available through SCI Action Canada that can help you become more physically active and hopefully you can also uh, c convey this information to your, to your peers. So the first resource is the SCI Get Fit Toolkit. And some of you may have uh, already picked up a copy. I've put some 150 copies, actually, out front at the, the registration desk. So the SCI Get Fit Toolkit was designed for people with spinal cord injury. It contains the guidelines themselves, but also lots of tips and strategies to help people achieve the guidelines. A an example exercise plan, information on how to develop an action plan, information on common barriers to physical activity faced by people with spinal cord injury, and some strategies that could potentially be used to, to overcome those barriers. It's four page color fold out, and again, I encourage you to pick one up. I also want to emphasize that this toolkit is also highly evidence-based. By conducting a needs survey, it's up at the top, it's invisible right now, uh, to identify what types of information people with SCI wanted to receive to help them achieve the guidelines. The evidence was again submitted to a consensus panel of consumers, fitness professionals and researchers who issued recommendations on what they thought the guide should contain. Uh, and we match those recommendations with the best available evidence in the literature and that um, what you see in the toolkit is the culmination of that, those bits of information. I'd like to tell you a little bit about Get In Motion. Get In Motion is our flagship service offered by SCI Action Canada. Through Get In Motion, we provide free, individualized, telephone-based physical activity counseling to anyone living with a spinal cord injury across Canada. The way the service works is that a person calls into our 1-800 phone line. We have a voicemail service on that phone line. They can call 24 hours a day and leave a message. Our administrator calls them back, asks them a few questions about their, their interests, about their lifestyle, 
And then we put them on a telephone counseling program. So we have a, a wonderful physical activity counselor who's trained in, not just in physical activity counseling, but he has six years experience in training people with spinal cord injury in an exercise setting. So our typical call program is uh, clients sign up for a six month program. Again, it's completely free. And the counselor calls them every week for the first two months, then every other week for the next two months, and about every three or four weeks for the next two months after that. The counseling sessions are designed to meet the individual needs of, of, the, of the client. They're primarily motivational, uh, targeting, helping people identify barriers to physical activity and developing strategies to overcome barriers, setting goals, developing action plans. Some people uh, don't want to use the six-month service, and that's absolutely fine. We tailor it to their needs. We have some people who just like to call in every once in a while to get some information. Do we know where they could go to play tennis, or do we know of an accessible fitness facility in their community? However, most of our clients say that they just really like knowing that once a week they're going to get a phone call, someone trying to find out or asking them about their physical activity, and they find that's very motivational. They don't want to say, no, I didn't do anything this week, so they find that it helps to keep them on track. So this service has been up and running for about three and a half years now. Again, it's evidence-based. We started out with two randomized controlled trials showing the effectiveness of telephone-based physical activity counseling for people with spinal cord injury. And then through some wonderful partnerships, we've been able to parlay those randomized controlled trials into a nationwide service. We've got a little bit of preliminary data to show you that Get In Motion works. What this graph shows is the percentage of our callers in, uh, participating in mild, moderate, and heavy intensity activity. And you can see steady increases in physical activity uh, across our callers over the six-month calling period. Let me tell you a little bit about our Active Homes project. So to backtrack a little bit, one of the things we wanted to find out in SCI Action Canada is who do people with spinal cord injury want to get their physical activity information from? And we conducted a couple of projects to determine that. And we got two very clear messages. People with SCI want to get physical activity information from healthcare professionals, and healthcare professionals very broadly defined, OTs, PTs, MDs, KINs. But they also want to get physical activity information from their peers, people who know what it's like to live with a spinal cord injury, to face the challenges of being physically active with a spinal cord injury, and who have some practical hands-on advice of how to do it. In the Active Homes project, we leveraged what we had learned about the importance of peer support. Active Homes was a pilot project that we conducted in Toronto and Kitchener-Waterloo. And for the purposes of this project, we sent a fitness trainer and a peer with a spinal cord injury into the homes of people living with paraplegia. The peer and the fitness trainer went into their home, and while they were there, the fitness trainer prescribed an individualized strength training program to the client, and our peer, uh, we have one of them here today actually, uh, peer demonstrated the exercises, talked to the client a little bit about how to be physically active in his or her own home, and uh, found a safe place in the home where they could do the exercises, perhaps um, identified some makeshift equipment they could use to do the strength training, such as water bottles or, or cans. And then when they left, that person had a strength training program they could do right then and there. This program was tremendously successful. We found that over a four-week period from before we went into the person's home to afterwards, clients had essentially tripled the number of minutes of strength training that they were doing each week. And we're currently working with CPA right now to CPA Ontario uh, on a couple of funding proposals to see if we can potentially expand this, this program. In the meantime, however, the resources from that program are available on our website. So we pilot tested the project in people with paraplegia and we have an exercise, a home-based strength training manual and accompanying, accompanying videos available on our website for people with paraplegia and we've also developed uh, corresponding manuals and videos for people with tetraplegia and they're free and available for download. Some people may prefer rather than uh, structured exercise to get out and play a sport and over the past several years, we've been working with our partners at the Canadian Paralympic Committee to do a better job of providing information on where people can uh, participate 
it in sport, can find accessible sport and recreation opportunities. If you go to their website, paralympic.ca, you'll find a link to the Get Involved in Parasport portal. And th this is an amazing portal that it, it's continually evolving and it took an awful lot of work to, to get it to this point because in this portal, regardless of where you live across Canada or essentially regardless of what sport you want to play, you can go here and get information on where to do it. So if you're Ken and Kappa's casing and you want to try adapted curling, you type in Kappa's casing and curling and up will come a list of places in Kappa's casing where you can try adapted curling. The portal is also being expanded to identify places where you could rent adapted equipment as well or where you can find coaching or find a club. It, it, it's a phenomenal resource. You can find all of these resources on our website, sciactioncanada.ca. Uh, it's just been updated recently, actually, so there is a tab at the top with resources and uh, with downloads available. And one thing I'd like to draw your attention to is our physical activity queue log. And once again, through the queue log or question and answer log, we're leveraging what we know about the power of peer support for promoting physical activity. So we have two bloggers who work on our site, and I'm very proud to say that Thompson Rogers provides financial support for our bloggers in this aspect of our website. And our bloggers, one has paraplegia and one has tetraplegia, and each month we give them a question and they respond to it. Uh, so for example, we might ask them questions, or what are common barriers that you have faced to physical activity and how do you, do you overcome them? Uh, how do you remain active in the winter? So our peers blog about that, and my research assistant, she'll find a research article on that topic and weave in a little bit of evidence in addition to the, the peer perspective. As I finish up this presentation, I'd also like to share with you some of the, some other initiatives that are either ongoing or that are, are coming online very soon so that you can be aware of some of the services and promotional strategies that we're using to get news about the physical activity guidelines out into the community. Our ultimate goal is to make sure that everyone in Canada with a spinal cord injury knows about the guidelines as well as the healthcare professionals and the other people who, who provide services. So one of the ways we did this was last fall we worked uh, very closely with our good friends at, at CPA Ontario to put on what we called the SCI Action Canada Roadshow. And uh, earlier on this morning, Bill mentioned that there are 17 off CPA Ontario offices throughout the province, and we actually sent a team to 15 of these 17 uh, locations right across the province to talk about the guidelines, to demonstrate different exercises that could be used to achieve the guidelines, to bring in a peer to talk about his or her own personal experiences with physical activity, and I think perhaps most importantly, to start a dialogue within those communities, particularly some of the smaller communities. Start a dialogue of getting people there talking about what facilities are available, what's needed, what resources are available that could be shared. We're also continuing to work with the Canadian Paralympic Committee as an educational partner. And this is a, a program they have, Changing Minds, Changing Lives, which is targeted towards healthcare professionals and healthcare trainees. Uh, the program has been up and running for, for several years where they go and speak to these groups about the importance of sport for people with disabilities and how to get people involved in sport. But we, what we have done is build in the SCI physical activity guidelines into this module. So now when the CPC goes out and delivers this module, people are hearing specifically about physical activity for people with spinal cord injury. D that just gives you a sense of uh, where we've been able to to distribute this information across Canada in the past four or five months. We're also working with the Active Living Alliance for Canadians with a Disability as an educational partner. And very much like the CPC, they had a, a wonderful program in place where they are training kinesiology and phys ed students right across Canada about the importance of adapted physical activity. They had their module in place, and what they've allowed us to do is to include an SCI-specific module in that package of information. So our, our new um, phys ed teachers, kinesiologists, rec therapists, and so on, as they graduate, they're going to know all about physical activity for people with spinal cord injury, the guidelines, the benefits, the opportunities, the barriers. I, I'm really excited about uh, the introduction of a new spinal cord injury university module. How many of you know what SCIU is? 
Okay, so S SCIU or Spinal Cord Injury University is this amazing series of videos that have been developed to teach people living with a spinal cord injury about life with a spinal cord injury. They're uh, very well produced and um, I believe, Peter, are they on CPA website? I think there's a, a link. There is a link on, on the CPA Ontario website, thank you. And uh, we're just finishing up a module on physical activity for SCIU. That gives you a sense of our, our reach over the past year in terms of uh, where we're getting our information to. And, and today will uh, also be folded into these numbers as we, as we reach more and more healthcare professionals, consumers, and so on. So just to finish up, what can you do? Uh, as I mentioned to the consumers in the room, delighted to be able to share this information with you today. Please pass it on. You've heard about the power of peer support and peer influence and how important that is in terms of promoting physical activity. To the healthcare professionals and service providers in the room, we've heard again and again what an important source of physical activity information you are, but yet I know that many healthcare professionals are often reluctant to promote physical activity, perhaps because they lack information or resources. I'm here to tell you today there are physical activity guidelines and other resources available to help you and your clients or patients with spinal cord injury. So please see me later if you'd like additional information. Our website is saiactioncanada.ca and don't forget to pick up a copy of the toolkit as well. Thank you.